quickly, please. Come downstairs quickly. Yes, Uncle Otto. What is it? You look so elated. Yeah, Axel. I have found something that is very interesting. In this shipment of old books, which I ordered from Iceland, the shipment which came just yesterday, in this book, I found... Uncle, it looks very old. The binding's so frayed. The cover's so mildewed. The book is old, nephew. Very old. We are living in the year of 1873, and this book here, see in the front of it? It is dated 1544. That makes it how old? Figure it now quickly, boy. 1873, mm -hmm. 1544. Yeah. The book is 329 years old. Good boy. Not bad for a 17-year-old. You did figure that quickly. One day will make me proud. Your mother and father, if they were alive, would be proud too. Well, thank you, Uncle Otto. But the book, it, it seems to be in Danish. And it's not like the Danish that I've been learning in the past two years since you brought me here to Denmark from America. No, Axel, this is in the sort of Icelandic dialect, which was in use over 300 years ago. A strange mixture of Danish, German, Norwegian, and the ancient Icelandic speech of the old Vikings. You see, it was not until perhaps 70 years ago, around 1800, that the Icelanders began using something like pure Danish as their tongue. Do I read this right? The title? Diary of Arn Saknussen. Good boy, that's right. Axel, this is a diary of a great 16th century Icelandic scientist, Arn Saknussen. Unfortunately, it is an early diary. One from the years of Saknussen's youth, the years before he made the strange journey into the depths of the earth, which has since become a, a sort of legend in Iceland. A journey into the depths of the earth. Yes, there was a story in Iceland, almost lost in the centuries which have passed since Saknussen's death, that Saknussen once traveled deep into a gigantic passageway, a gigantic cave, and almost reached the center of the planet on which we live. But he was thought a madman or a fake in his time. His story was always discredited as a, well, an elaborate joke. And before he died, he destroyed a diary which he said contained the record of his journey. He was bitter by then. No one believed him. So he destroyed his records. But he did not destroy this, this note which he must have forgotten. Here, I found it in this book, this early diary. He must have stuck it there sometime after his journey. The paper almost crumbles as you touch it. The, the writing's so faded. Can you make out what it says? Yes, Axel, I have made out most of it. Here at the start, it is clear. It says, if you trace the shadow of Scartaris to its end in early July and go to the place where it touches the crater of Schnefel at noon, you will find the secret. From there, brave traveler who reads this, you may travel to the center of the earth. I did it. Those words, Axel, are all I can truly make out, but here at the end, the signature is unmistakable. It is signed by Arn Satnus. What are Scartaris and the crater of Snaefel? They are places in Iceland. Schnefel is an, an extinct volcano, a crater located in the south of the island. It is surrounded by peaks, and, and Scartaris is one of those peaks. What did he mean? Trace the shadow of Scartaris in early July. In the early days of July, well, the sun must reach a high point behind Scartaris. At noon, the point of the shadow of the peak must somehow indicate a place in the crater of Schnefel where there is a crevice, a, a cave, an opening. And through that opening, Sarknusen traveled deep into the bowels of the earth. Uncle, <laughs> you especially should know that that couldn't be true. You're a professor of physical sciences. You know that science teaches that the deeper one goes into the earth, at least past the level of the mines, well, that, that the deeper one goes, the hotter it becomes. The depths of the earth are said to be molten rock, like the lava of volcanoes. Axel, that theory has never been proven. 
Thus far, man has never bored more than a mile or two below Earth's surface. We just do not know if it is so. It is just a theory. Sark Nielsen might not have been a fake, and I propose to find out. To find out? I don't understand. Today, Axel, it is the 23rd of May. University lets out in two weeks. We can be in Iceland by the 1st of July. Meanwhile, there's plenty of time to make our plans, make our arrangements in advance. I know a fine guide there in Iceland, Hans Torridsen. He'll join us. What do you, what do you mean, join us? I, I don't understand. Nephew, we, you, I, and I think Hans, are going to climb the slopes of the extinct volcano called Schneffel. And on one day, at noon in July, we shall go to the point of the shadow which Skartaris casts, and we shall see if Sarkusen told the truth. And if we find the cave opening, Uncle, what then? Then, my boy, then we shall enter it and follow his trail. Oh, this is fantastic. Fantastic? Don't you find the prospect exciting? Yes, but it, 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 it's just that the... <laughs> if you're afraid, Axel, you need not come. Oh, Uncle, I'm not afraid. But I, I just... Well, as I said, it just seems fantastic. Fantastic, yes. You'll soon see. And now... I think you and I should catch the next train to Copenhagen. Do you realize the supplies we shall have to buy, the arrangements to be made in the next few weeks, a journey to the center of the earth? We're going to have to plan very well for that. Come, get your jacket. The next train is in ten minutes. Yes, sir, right away. Fine time. We are nearly a day ahead of schedule. Look at that town. You'll find Reykjavik, Iceland's capital, a lovely little city. We will be ashore in a few minutes. Oh, it looks beautiful. In fact, Iceland itself looks beautiful. Ever since we sighted land, I've never seen a landscape so strange, beautiful, yet well, severe. Severe? <laughs> Wait until you see Iceland down in the southeast around Schnefel and Skatoris. That's where it's really wild. But look, there on the dock, that, that man in the yellow slicker with the red beard. There, that's Hans, our guide. Hello, Hans? Hans, here. Hello. A little. Since we have climbed into the crater, slowly it seems to have become more and more cold. Well, actually, even though we are still in the sunlight, the crater of Schnefel here is 6,000 feet above sea level. Even at noon in July, it will be very cold. But it seems to be colder here than when we crossed that ridge back there. Is there any reason, Hans? Yeah. This crater is like a huge bucket which holds in the cold of the ice around us. Well, well, no soon. We have only a few minutes until noon. Now look, Professor. There, suddenly on that slope, the shadow of Scartaris. Uncle, that slope over there. The shadow seems suddenly to be racing along the crater. Yes, the sun seems just exactly high enough now. The slope is so sharp, the shadow has left a thousand feet ahead along the ground in, in a minute. In there, look at that crack in the floor of the crater. That must be it. Sark Nusen's passage. Quick, let's get to it. Careful in the snow. Take it slow but steady. This is it. This deep one. We'll have to use ropes to descend. This must be it. Hans, prepare the ropes. Axel, what do you find on that side? No easy entry here. The drop is sheer like over on your side. We'll have to use the ropes. Wait. Uncle, Hans. Here, th th there's a sort of a carving here in the rock. Uncle, it's carved into the rock, just inside. It says, this way... And then it says, 
on Satnusen. I'm coming over, Axel. Hans, prepare to host for our descent. Yeah. I can't go another step. Can we rest again? Rest? Well, actually, I, I guess we should bed down for the night. Yeah, Professor, I think so, too. It's over ten hours since we entered this cave. We're quite deep down into the earth. Yeah, perhaps a half mile. We were lucky on that long passage we had two hours back where we could walk for so long at a single stretch. Look, Uncle, above us. It's like a chimney of rock. Is that light up there, that, that strange pale light, the moon? No, Axel, that's the midsummer sun that lingers here in Iceland in summertime. But now, boy, let's get our bedrolls prepared. Hans, light one of those alcohol-tipped torches. We must conserve the fuel in our lamps. Yeah, Professor. out of water. And that pack that slipped away from hands back there, down the crevasse, that held most of our food. Boy, I think we must try to find our way back. And a boy is right, Professor. We'll be out of oil for our lamps soon, too. We're sure to find underground springs of water soon. And what about the food? The pack I lost when I slipped had all of the food. Well, we're lost in any case. Sucknusen must not have come this way in this journey. I think we lost the way back there at that fork. We must find our way back there again, perhaps. Then. Uh, uh, Uncle! Hans, listen! Is that water? A, a running stream that the sound is faint. Here, behind this rock. Hey, it could be. Yeah, I think it is. Wait, let me have it with my pick. <laughs> this rock is, is like a thin shell. It's breaking. You've got it, Hans. There's water there, spreading out. And, and, and look, it's flowing down glade. Axel, bring your lamp here. This small opening here. The water's flowing down through it. It's big enough for a man to get through. Maybe we're not lost. Come, let's crawl through it before the water starts flooding it. we do now, Uncle? This is the fourth time in a week that we've come to a point of what seems to be no return. Here in these caverns, deep inside the earth. Yeah, Professor. And our food is almost gone now. We have water, but... Hans, Axel, we are lost somewhere deep in the earth. Deeper than any man except Sapnusen has ever been before. And yet, we're not really lost. We are, according to my calculations, about 50 miles below the surface of Iceland. And the temperature here should be blazing hot. Perhaps a thousand degrees. And yet it must only be about 30 degrees. Ice forms on the edges of the running water. That proves that Sagnusen was right. And our modern scientists are wrong that the center of the Earth is hot and molten. But, Professor, we're far from the center of the Earth. At the rate we're traveling, perhaps 50 miles now in eight days, 
We could take years to get to the center of the earth. Sock Nielsen did that. He got to the center, or almost. In any case, again, we must find a way to go. We no longer know which passage will lead us up and which down. At this point where we stand, there are several passages. Each of us must explore one. Let us not lose each other. Don't go too far. We will meet back here. Perhaps one of us will find a clear passage. Axel, you take that one there. Yes, sir. Hans, you try that one. Yeah, don't go too far. I'll try that one over there. Oh, I've, I've lost them. Uncle! Hans! The lamp, it's sputtering. Fuel gone. It's it, it's out. Uncle! Hans! I can't see a thing. Uncle! I must... <laughs> seemed to come from down here. Oh, I hope he didn't fall too hard. He could be hurt, hurt very badly. Axel! Axel! Listen, Professor. Quiet. Groaning. Over there. There he is. Oh, a quick, Hans. Lift him. Yeah. Uh, he's not too bad. Bleeding from those cuts. Terribly bruised, but, but the pulse is all right. Yeah. He's unconscious. Probably concussion. His, his bedroll fell over there. Quick. Yeah. Let's get him into it. Yeah. We must make him warm. Yeah. But you'll be all right. You're not badly hurt. Just a concussion. Uncle. Oh, I thought I'd never see you again. Oh, he is all right, Professor. You're a good lad, Axel. Brave, too. Thank you, Hans. Uncle, what is that strange sound? It sounds like... like the surf of the ocean. And there's... there's light here. Yeah, yeah, Axel. I don't know how to explain it. Your fall down that shaft led us to you, and that... Let us hear. There, about ten yards away, there is the shore of an ocean, a subterranean ocean. That is surf what you hear. And there is vegetation here on the shores of the sea. Vegetation? Yeah, and some of it is edible. That solves our problem of food. We've eaten some while you are unconscious. Some of these things taste like raw vegetables would back there on the surface. And the light. We are still inside the earth? The light? Yeah, I don't know how to explain. We are inside the earth, many miles inside. I can only, I can only think that the light we see is caused by some strange electrical energy or charge, some electrical buildup trapped in the huge void out there over the underground sea. Actually, we have left behind narrow passages and little caves. There, out there, over that sea, there is no rock above. There seems to be a sky just as vast as our own on the surface. We have, I think, traced Sagnusen's path somehow. And now, we are at the outer stretches of the world at the center of the Earth. World at the center of the Earth? Yes, and a very strange world, too. But now, Axel, here, take this pill. It will help you sleep. You must rest. Tomorrow, we sail on that ocean out there. Yeah, boy. And while you are unconscious, Hans found logs. I've started to build a raft. And while you sleep, I will finish it.
Good morning, Axel. You are strong enough to get up. Hans is almost finished with the raft. Oh, yes, Uncle. I feel much better. I really slept once that pill began to work. Good. Come along. I have some breakfast cooking down the beach there on those rocks. Uncle, what are these? Here. These yellowish-white things. They look like, like huge bones. They are bones. The bones of prehistoric animals. The beach is littered with them. That over there must be the jawbone of a dinosaur. And that, that I think, is the enormous hip bone of a Tyrannosaurus. Uncle, do, do you think that there could be any of the, the dinosaurs still left alive? Hard to tell, nephew. We've already seen so many strange sights down here that there might be some alive, but I doubt we shall find them right around here. No signs of them. Uncle, what are those? Those strange trees? No, Axel, not trees. They are a, a type of fungus, huge mushrooms, tall as the tallest pine trees. They thrive here on the shore of the underground sea, so much dampness and warmth. How far do you think we've come in our journey, Uncle? We've come down to the earth several thousand feet, but we've also been traveling on levels parallel to the surface above, I, I estimate we're about to. Hundred miles away from Iceland. Under the ocean? Under the Atlantic? Yes, and probably headed in the direction of Europe. Uncle, why is Hans building the raft? Instead of crossing the ocean, shouldn't we try to find our way back? Axel, if you are afraid, we will turn back. But I think that somewhere across this subterranean ocean, we will find the way Sapnusen eventually found a passage to the center of the Earth. If you wish to go on, Uncle, I'm willing. Afraid? Yes, I am afraid, but but I feel that, that well, I could go on. Professor! Axel! The raft! I finished it! Coming, Hans. Well, let's get some breakfast, and then we're on our way to sail this underground sea. Still no sight of a roof to the cavern above this sea. No, Axel, I don't think we will ever see that roof. Those clouds overhead will be there constantly. The cavern roof covering the sea is probably at least three miles above us. Thus, that, that cloud cover hides it from our view. Professor, how far have we sailed in these three days? It's hard to say, about a hundred miles, I think. Look there, Hans, your fishing line. Yeah. The trawler. You got a bite. Ah, maybe we'll have fish for supper. uncle. Twenty-one days of sailing and, and still no sight of land. If it wasn't for the fish we catch, we, we'd be starving. Don't worry, Axel, not yet. We've traveled at least 300 miles, maybe even 500. We should be near a shore soon. Hans, take that pickaxe that you tied to our rope and yeah. cast it into the water again to, to see if we can sound the depth yet. Yeah, yeah Professor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, professor, something's pulling at it. Haul it in. Maybe we have touched rock. Oh, here, help me. Oh, I, it's caught. Oh, there. Free. Haul in the line. Uncle, those marks on the axe. Yeah, axe. Teeth marks. The axe is... It's in half in two. Perhaps it struck some large fish as it sank. Hans, check our guns just in case. Yeah. Uh, professor, there, look. Uncle, it's enormous. It's like a gigantic crocodile. The head of a crocodile? The shape of a porpoise? The, the, the flippers of a whale? At least 50 feet long. That is an ichthyosaurus. 
a species of marine reptile which has been extinct up there on the surface of the earth for hundreds of thousands of years. Is it, is it coming toward us? No, it seems to be waiting for something. Uncle, Hans, there, another thing. It's surfacing. It looks like a turtle. Yes, the shell of a turtle, but, but the body of a serpent. That's another prehistoric marine reptile. A plesiosaurus. Quick, Hans, shift course with the sail. We must get away. They are positioning to fight each other. They'll, they'll capsize us. Quick, look, they're starting. Professor, I don't think our troubles are over yet. Those clouds, they're building up for a storm. The electricity in the air, electrical energy is building up fast. Hans, Hans, get that sail. Yeah, the wind must not slap our mast. Axel, yeah, you, you move on. Not too much damage, Professor. But we lost most of our supplies when that wave threw us ashore. Oh, the tidal wave must have carried us for miles, Uncle. It did. Hard to tell how many. Oh, it still is a miracle that we were not capsized. Yeah. And even more a miracle that we were we were not dashed to pieces when we hit the shore. Uncle, look behind us. That that forest. Hey, it's more like a tropical jungle. And there are birds overhead. Hans, try, try to see to the raft. Axel and I will explore a little. Yeah, Professor, but be careful. Come along, Axel. Stay close to me. Uncle, there are more bones. This path is strewn with them. Yes, this jungle path is like, is like a gallery of the whole history of, of the life of animals on Earth. Wait, wait, Axel, here. Here, a skull. Like a human skull, or only one much more huge? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's humanoid, but I, I've never seen or heard of one so large. I wonder, could this be the skull of that creature which has baffled science? The skull of that Homo erectus that science thinks of as the missing link? Uncle, in that clearing ahead. Beasts, animals, I heard of them. They look like... Like huge elephants with hair on their bodies. Those tusks! They're mammoths, Axel. Prehistoric mammoths. Don't go sharply. We have not been seen. We can't get away. Uncle, behind that one to the right. A gigantic ape! Oh, dear Lord. I, I don't believe my eyes. That is no ape, Axel. That is a man. A prehistoric man. See, he carries a spear. No ape will do that. He's leading those mammoths. They're ten. The uncle is twelve feet high or more. Quickly now, but quiet. Back to the raft. Now what, Professor? We've left that shore with your ape men and mammoths miles behind. But the current has us stuck in this fjord. 
high rock cliffs all around us. Yes, we rounded that rocky point back there. The current carried us, and there, there seems to be nothing we can do with the sails to, to lead us out of here. But the pull has stopped now. It's just that we can't get back toward open sea. Uncle, over there, a shelf of rock. Right. Try to steer the raft that way, Hans. Right, right, almost there. Get a light on that rock, Axel. Good, secure? Now, now let's see where this cave goes. Climb onto the shelf. Hans, you come too. Yeah, Professor. Uncle, this cave doesn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, perhaps it doesn't. Perhaps we are finally trapped. Professor, I found something. It's a knife. Here, here it is. It is a knife. Yeah, a knife. A and a knife like the Icelanders carry. But this must be hundreds of years old. Could it be? Could it be that it belonged to Arn Sacknussen? That Sacknussen dropped it here? Professor, that knife would be capable of chipping rock. Sacknussen could have used it to chip a message into rock. A message like the one we saw in that wall back up there in the crater of Schnefel. You're right. Axel, check that short passage there. Hans, you take that. Yeah. I'll try this one. Uncle, here. I think I found. Yes. Initials. A.S. Good boy. A.S. on Sacknussen. These initials mark the entrance to Sacknussen's path to the center of the earth. But the way is blocked. Yes, but the rock is loose. This looks like the debris of a, of a rock slide. Hans, our explosives are still intact. We have not lost them. No, they are still intact. I wish I could say the same for our food supplies. Never mind that now. Here's my plan. We'll blast through this rock debris. Place our main charge here. Yeah. The small ones in the crevices to that side. Mm. We'll wait on the raft, light a fuse long enough to reach from the raft into here. Wait for the blast, then we should be safe back there on the raft. It's far enough away. Yeah, that's it. Come, Axel, Hans, let's get our explosives set. We still might find our way to the Earth's center. Lashed yourselves to the raft? Yeah, yeah. Good. Now, now, match. There, the fuse is lit. Hold tight now. We'll feel concussion from the blast, I'm sure. Five seconds, perhaps. Five, four, three, two, one, zero! Uncle! We, the, the, the raft, the water is sucking us into the cave. The wall is gone. The passage must go down. The explosion tore away too much of the wall. Watch it. Watch it. We're rushing in. We're rushing in with the water. We're gone. Hang tight. Here we go. It's subsiding now. Where are we, Professor? I, I don't know. The raft did not capsize, in spite of the huge suction of water in this passage. That must be because... Because... Hans! Axel, our raft was sucked into a sort of... Well... The force of the suction pinned our raft flat against the surface of the water. And that's why we did not capsize. The force glued the raft to the surface of the water, and we are in a circular shaft of rock. The raft, the water, we're, we're rising again. Yes, we are. Having reached the bottom of this well, the water somehow is now being forced to rise again. But where will it take us? Hard to tell. This might be our end now. We're trapped. I, I just don't know any longer. I, I'm sorry. Uh, professor, we have just a little food left. Why don't we share it? It's not much, but 
We might need all our strength soon. And maybe it's good for our our feelings. Uh, our morale. Yeah, Hans, yeah, it could be. Uh, share it out among us. Uncle, the rock wall. I can just reach out and touch it with my hand. It's turning warm. And Professor, the water beneath us, it's turning warmer too. Uncle, is it an, an earthquake? The walls are beginning to tremble. No, no. No, we are, we are not in the midst of an earthquake. We're in the chimney of a volcano. A volcano that is about to erupt. The rock is heating, and, the, and that water too, because the water which swept into this chimney after the blast has hit a deposit of molten lava below. The reaction of the cold water and the hot lava is causing the option. But who we be going alive? With luck, no. There must be several hundred feet of water below our raft between us and the lava. The water way down, of course, is boiling away rapidly, but the whole mass of it is rising rapidly. The raft is rising very fast now. We have a chance. This might be our only chance, our only way of reaching the surface, if this water doesn't boil away completely. But, but the water is getting so hot, nearly, nearly to the boiling point. Yes, yes, it will probably become terrifically hot, but we might last it out. We're rising so fast now. Undo the ropes of your lashes. If the raft is lost into the sky up there, if the volcano erupts, we must be free or we'll splinter with the raft. We might be tossed many feet till that way. But if our luck holds, the remaining water will spill over the crater's top, spilling us out with it. Then we might have a few minutes to get away before the lava begins to flow. Phew! It's becoming so intense. Steady now. We've been through so much. It might be over now. Professor, look up there. Sky! There's light ahead! The crater's lit. We're almost there. That is the sky. The water's rising faster than ever. We might make it. When we reach the lip, let your bodies relax. No telling whether we'll be exploded out of the chimney or just washed over the edge. If we are only washed over, we'll be knocked around severely. Uncle, it's faster now still. Hang on. Here I come. Come, crawl this way, or you'll be carried away by the water. Axel, crawl fast. Hans, where are you? Here, Professor. Trying. Uh, hurry, hurry, man. We must get away. enough down to slope now that, that we can rest a while. Why doesn't the eruption come? It's been at least ten minutes since we left. Oh, it will come. Only a few moments from now. Look over there. That deep cleft. The water is still coming down out of the chimney over the edge of the crater. The explosion will not come until after all of the water is gone. But we're far enough away that we should not be hurt by that. Hans, that, that gash over your eye, is it too bad? painful, Professor, but at least we're alive. Yes, almost miraculously. Where do you think we are, Uncle? This landscape certainly doesn't look like Iceland. Uh, no, we're, we're far from Iceland. We traveled so far under the surface of the Earth. No, Iceland was never this warm, and the color of the sky so blue. I think we are somewhere in the area of the Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean Sea? But that's 800, 900 miles from Iceland. Yes, more than that. More like a thousand miles. But we have traveled at huge speeds. That storm on the subterranean sea drove us many miles. The tidal wave, so many things which happened to us to, to speed our fantastic journey. Uncle, there's smoke now from the volcano. That's it. The eruption will take place in a minute or two. It won't be bad. I, I think we're far enough away, but still, flatten yourselves on the ground. Quickly now. 
There she goes! It's over now, just as I thought. It was mostly vapor, and that shoots straight up. There will be some lava flow, but it will probably be minor. We'll have plenty of time to reach that village down there. Professor, there, a man climbing toward us. Ma, che succes? Te fatta male, che si tu? He is speaking Italian. He wanted to know who we are, if we were hurt. Understand the summit, I will speak a little. I'll ask him to take us to his village. Leo porta al tuo villaggio. Di qui, per piacere. Se è straniero. He, he asks that we follow him. He, he says not to worry. The option is over, a minor one, but now we'll find out where we are exactly. It's Italy, of course, but uh, dove siamo? A Stromboli? The isola di Stromboli. Island of Stromboli, and, and that volcano there is named Stromboli. See, Stromboli? But, Uncle, that's an island in the Tyrrhenian Sea between Italy and Sicily. But that's almost at the tip of the boot of Italy. Yeah, and that's more than 1,500 miles from Iceland. What an incredible journey. A journey to the center of the Earth. We start out in Iceland in a volcanic crater 6,000 feet above sea level. We descend hundreds of miles into the interior of the Earth and we travel about 1,500 miles through the interior. Sock Nielsen was right. But I wonder if the world would believe us any more than they believed him. <laughs> ah, well, we shall see you soon. Prego, prego, venite, per piacere. The man, he's getting impatient. He must think we're just tourists who lost our way. He, he couldn't know that we were actually travelers within the bounds of the earth, that we were exploded out of the mouth of that volcano itself. Prego, venite con me, mia sposa la bambina se crede che mi ha fatto male. Si, signori, andiamo. Come, Axel, Hans, let us follow him. <laughs> yeah, professor. Yes, uncle. <laughs> venite, per piacere. Si, signori, we follow you. Andiamo. Andiamo.